What's going on? Okay, let's get it started. So, this week on the Dare Show podcast, let's talk. Let's talk playlists. We're gonna talk a lot of playlists, and my last time we're talking about Freddy's show. But anyways, so this week, last week was Thanksgiving. This week and like yesterday, Spotify give us our wrap up uh, of the year playlist. Some people were hating. Some people were hating for valid reasons. Like I know, um, I follow on Twitter, Jay Stevens, I believe that's how you say her name. Uh, I follow her on Twitter, and she's an artist. She's put out music, and you know everybody knows Spotify doesn't play doesn't pay artists what they you know what they are worth or whatever. Um, so she was just like fuck spotify just basically was like fuck spotify they don't pay y'all nothing yet they uh they got all these artists are <laughs> they don't pay these artists nothing but they have artists promoting their platform but i'm like spotify was the original originator just in terms of like streaming spotify it's not i don't think it's cheaper than the other ones although title right now has like a dollar sale going on for like three months um, title was created to give artists their platforms. I mean, give them, you know, pay them. Title, title was created to pay them. There's Apple Music, which I guess I don't really know how that works, but I'm, I'm of course thinking, you know, Apple Music, Apple, whatever, um, goes straight to the artist itself or whatever. But anyways, I just love that. I love I love this um, this wrap up thing they've been doing for the last like four or five years. Uh, show me what's good, what's popping, what's good in the streets. But first of all, Patty, you know, we gotta talk a little Patty first. She um, speaking of title, she collaborated with Title, and over on Title, she put out a Thanksgiving playlist, and it was so cute. Her little pie was like the logo. And she had some good hitters. Ain't Nobody, which was the song of the week last week. Shaka Khan. Yeah, by two, um, uh, Usher. California Love by Tupac. We love that. Why I Love You. That was one of the... Um, Why I Love You by Major. All This Love by Trey Songs. I don't know that song. I don't know that song. Um, it Would Be You by Johnny Gill. Anything... And anything, wait, oh, I forgot. By uh, Jaheem. Um, I Can Make It Better, which is one of my top songs uh, this year. I Can Better Make It Better by Luther. I had that little Luther moment. I remember uh, All Mine by Johnny Gill and Ralph Transfer. I think that's a newer song. She's very really in tune like with like some newer songs. Leave It Smoking by Tamiya. Leave It Smoke. You remember she was in that car singing Leave I think that was like last two in 2019. She was in that car like Thanksgiving and she was singing Leave It Smoking. I think with Tamiya. Was she with Tamiya? I forget. I was just like hoping there would be a Leave It Smoking remix because Patty's trying to get singing that part. I was like, okay, let's get a Leave, Leave It Smoking remix. But whatever, I'm not her manager. Um. What else? Hold On by Adele. That's a newer song. Hold On. Um, Essence by Wizkid. When You've Been Blessed by her. Of course, you know, for the holiday seasons. Leave the Door Open by Soak Sonic. Who I heard their album is very short. I heard it's very short. It's very good, but I hear nobody talking about it still. So, where's that? Um, I think it was nominated for a Grammy, if I'm not mistaken. Come back, come back. Come Into My Life by LaBelle. I think I know that song. I think. But shout out to Patty and that little playlist. Let's get on to my top um, songs playlist of the year. So first off, we have your top songs. I think this is the first ever. It's been... SWV songs and I did have an after I swear like you guys if you remember if you listen back that far after that verses 
with SWV and Escape. I just fell in deep love with Coco and deep love with SWV and their songs. And number one, I'll just do top five because that's what it has. Someone by Puff Daddy. Someone is satisfied. That's the jam. That's the jam of all jams. Those harmonies, like I said, um, Kelly Price wrote that song or co-wrote it. And it's like, I can hear her singing in it. Singing in it. <laughs> singing it. Number two is Man Crush Every Day. I didn't like... Wait, which one did I did not like? I don't think I like Ain't No Light, Ain't No Man, which is number three. Ain't No Man by SWV. I love Man Crush Every Day. It has, like, the perfect, like, auto-tune or whatever to it. It's such a great groove. It's very, like, modern modern R&B. And it's a very older song. It came out, like, six years ago at this point. Five, six years ago. But it's still so good, and they still sing it live. Ain't No Man. Ain't No Man. Not the one I got. The little sample. That's so good. Off of their still album. Album still called Still. Um, and then Can We by SWV is number four. Can We? That's like my favorite SWV song. Like, how do you not know that song? That is like classic R&B. Missy and Timberland. SWV killed it. And the video is so beautiful. Taj is gorgeous in the video. When You Cry. I did not like that song because I was going through SWV um, after the verses. And I was going through their albums. And I didn't... I sk- it wasn't like something I was like, like skipped over it and then I remember um, Taj talking about Puff's ex oh, what's her name like she was good with Tamar she was tight with Tamar she was a model back in the day I think she starts with her, her name starts with a P I want to call her like Portia or Knight or something I'm forgetting her name I'm so sorry lady and family I'm so sad like those kids lost their mother that like so soon um but anyways when you cry they like kind of dedicated that to her and i just like for some reason fell in love with it and then you actually listen to that song the song is so beautiful it's the vocals are insane lily and i don't like i said i don't know if tasha's on that song but lily and um coco their voices blend so well so well and it's just like, you have Lily um, kind of harmonizing and um, the overlapping. It's just such a beautiful song. And like I said, um, I asked Coco, what was her favorite song? Rain, from that album, Rain, or favorite ballad, Rain, or When You Cry. And she said, When You Cry, but she said it in a video. But the video, the ending of the video, I know she gets to it that question and she sings a little bit of it um it's her last answer um q a q a video if you want to go look at it on youtube coco c-o-k-o um she answers it but at the last the last like five six minutes of the video it cuts it gets cut off and i'm like no but anyways those are my favorites um, let's move on to top songs, which I believe are just SWV. Um, genres. So it has from, oh wait, I gotta, the genres, top genres was dance pop. I love me some dance pop. Quiet Storm, I think that's like the R&B. Gospel, a little patty, a lot of, um, uh, Jehovah Jireh by, um, Jacqueline. Jacqueline, I believe her name is. And the Clark Sisters. Um, Disco. Who's the Disco? (laughs) I don't know. It's a New Jack Swing. That's heavily... um, I would say Janet, but... I didn't... Janet was really on the list, but heavily... um, SWV first album. It's very much New Jack Swing. And so then they go into most binge-watched uh most binge watched al- uh I'm sorry podcast right I do listen to a lot of podcasts on Spotify Spotify really is my main like that's my main bitch um Torre- the Torre show was most binge watched 
or binge listen to podcasts. I'm like, yeah, I kind of do. Because Torrey does have really good um, interviews. Except for, you know, he'll put like half of it on Patreon or whatever. You're like, oh no. But for the most part, part, for the most part, Torrey has really great interviews with really great people. I remember the Tony Braxton interview was so, so, so good. He did one with Tony, and she, she, he had her, like, singing. And he was just, like, asking questions, and she gave really great answers and, like, got really deep into it. That's really what, that's one of the ones that made me want to continue to listen to Torre. Torre is from, um, like, MTV, back in the day, a musical journalist, a journalist, and just, you know, on his own. And then we have top podcasts, so... Number five would be The View Behind the Table. The View talked to a bunch of other co-hosts. I thought it was going to be longer than what it was, but it's not. It was like six or seven, eight episodes. Uh, That was really good. I enjoyed them. Although they had Raven, Candace, I forget her last name, the white lady actress, and Sarah Haynes talking together. And Raven sounded like she didn't want to be there. I was just like, okay. (laughs) (laughs) Who did I? I enjoyed Whoopi and Joy's conversation. Um, What's her name? I'm looking right at her. The girl that was friends with um, Megan McCain. Sorry. The girl that was friends with Megan McCain, Sarah Huntsville, Abby Huntsville. Abby was really good. She got into depth of like why she left. You know, there was like ex- executives. Um, uh, yeah, let's let's move along. So number four on my top podcast is Deja the View, Deja the View, <laughs> and they talk about the View. They're really funny. They're in Canada. You get a whole different perspective of what's going on. Then the Scorpion, number three is the Scorpion podcast, which is they the Scorpion show. They just did a podcast version. I don't know if they still do. I unsubscribed because I was like, y'all aren't giving me new episodes. They probably haven't started. But Mikhail is so funny. Um, absolutely hilarious. And then there's Kevin. Their relationship is so interesting because... They're friends, but they want to make it when they're at the end of the day, they kind of want to make it seem like they're not good friends in a way. I kind of like got that. I don't know. It was weird. The Mariah Report is number two, which I thought the Mariah Report was going to be number one, but I the view is number one. They do have more episodes to listen to. The, you know, each episode that they put out becomes a podcast. Much easier, but although I do enjoy watching, binge watching The View now, it's on Hulu. The Mariah Report, they talk about, which is number two, they talk about um, Mariah, they're really funny, Dan and, Dan and some other guy, I don't know, I forgot his name. (laughs) Okay, so, top artists would be Mariah, which I'm kind of shocked. And the song they played was Cool On I'm Cool On You. Cool On You. Such a great song from the Rarities. And then my top five artists were Mariah, number one, which I'm kind of shocked. Like, I don't really remember listening to a lot of Mariah. Caution was still on the co- on the playlist. Can't Take That Away was on there. Dedicated or Take It was on there. It's like that was, ta- was on there. I was like, oh, okay. I guess... Number two was, or number two is SWV. Number three is Patti LaBelle. Now, I did listen to a lot of Patti when I was doing reviews. Also with Lady Gaga, I was doing reviews. Who's Number four is Lady Gaga. Patti LaBelle is number three. I enjoy Patti all overall. I'm glad she's still on the list. But number five, I was very shocked to see Beyonce was on the list. I was like, What? Beyonce, I don't remember listening to a lot of her this year, but I guess I did. 
I don't even like I love me some Beyonce, but I'm like I don't listen to her a lot anymore. Partially because like I listen I literally listened to her for like five years straight. Three four years, three to four years straight. When I was like a kid. But anyways. Top artists we have oh, okay. Those are the top artists. And those are the top songs. My top genre was dance pop. Minutes listen, 34,497. Mariah is a top artist. I'm shocked at that. And I'm shocked at Beyonce. But I'm not, if you think about it at the end of the day. What are your um what are your top wrap up numbers this year? For the podcast, it seemed like I didn't I didn't have a lot of um, information it was wanted to give me. It said 44% of your fans listen to you between 11 a.m. and 5 p.m., making it a popular time. You released 2,551 minutes of content across 48 episodes. <laughs> you remember to drink water. <laughs> um, yeah. Thank you for listening to the Dare Show podcast. We have 48 episodes, I think. Yeah. Yeah. I'm sure. Yeah, that's correct. Most correct number. I started... When did I start? I think it was like January 20-something I started. So I'm going to take a break. And when I come back, we're going to talk a little um, more. Thank you so much for sticking around on the Dare Show podcast where I talk music. We talk about TVs, pop culture, fights, whatever. <laughs> Whatever is popping off in the universe at this time. So, I just want to go through quickly some of the songs of the my top songs of 2021. Thank you to Spotify for the wrap-up. Um, also, this podcast is everywhere. It's on Spotify. Um, it's on Apple Music. It's on um, Google Podcasts. It's on Anchor. It's also on YouTube. Also, I, give me a second. Sometimes I get a, it takes me a moment. But I try to get over there and put a little video with, like, pictures and stuff up on YouTube. So, Something Has to Break. Absolutely always a favorite. 365 by Katy Perry. The, like, the last... <laughs> they barely made it, right? 365... Um, I played that like crazy. I forgot Kelly put out an album this year. I think that was early this year. Yeah. She put out an album, Crazy. I'm gonna be crazy. That's a good one. Use Your Heart by SWV. I love the vocals on there. Backsliding. I, you know, I went into that moment. I had to go deep dive because I was just such a lover of that song. Carrie Underwood, her, um, Reflections, uh, what's her name? What's it called? Residency in Vegas popped off last night. It looks really good. Carrie, send me tickets. I want to come to Vegas and see you, girl. Um, Adele also announced she's having a residency next month in Vegas. It's like, girl. Also, if I'm not mistaken, Katy Perry has a residency popping off in Vegas now or something like that. Something like that. Cry Pretty. I love that song. It's like that. I'm surprised. And I think some of these songs with Mariah are just like songs that just so happened to play, but I didn't mean for it to complete, keep playing. Stay With Me by Candace is on here with uh, Tracy Braxton. And I figured out a reason why I don't think... I think people just don't know that... Candace has a song with Tracy Braxton. And it's a really good song, you guys. Show Me the Way by the Clarks. I love that one. That's um, amazing. A lot of Kelly. Say My Name. I love me. Say My Name always. Harley's in Hawaii by Katie. We love that song. What else? What else? What else? Plastic Doll by Gaga. Sunshine by Coco. My Saving Grace, I had, like, a moment of My Saving Grace this year. Just, like, obsessed with, like, the vocals and then, like, how she takes off with her vocals. And that was one of the songs. My Man, I don't know how that got on here. All Alone in Love, such a bop. Work That, I really got into that because 
by Mary J because Craig put out like this remix or Craig for Craig Seymour notified us of the, this remix and I just fell in love with that song work this that uh, 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 work your thing uh, 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 I can't stand the rain when Tina by Tina Turner when they put that on her documentary I was just like yes I have to go because she was like her. she was wearing this like straw skirt and her hips were just shaking and I was just like ooh and like the beat it was just like ooh I can make it better Luther I fell re, re fell in love with this song great album I re fell in love um like yeah with this song cause I've I heard we heard I heard it growing up but then you know you lose track of some songs like I got lost track of a Shocker Khan song but I fell in love with the, so many songs this year re fell in love with Thriving by Mary J, who um, has a new single, two new singles coming out this Friday. I can make it better. So we'll talk about that next week. I can make it better. Jehovah Jireh by Jacqueline, not Jacqueline Carr. Jacqueline Carr. It's such like an old school vocal with like new school elements. Like the choir, the lyrics are so powerful, so amazing. I love that song. Uh, I think that's all. I am free. A lot of Candace, Love Notes, Show Me. Yeah. What a great year. So cheers to that. Hopefully we'll get some more new great songs to listen to. I'm going to try to listen to the, um, what's it called? I'm going to try to listen to the Grammy Award song, Grammy nominated songs. I'm planning out how I want to end it. I know I want to talk about a little Patty LaBelle Christmas. Uh, Maybe we'll (laughs) revisit that. uh, Where my background singers, which I was the first person to put on the internet, on YouTube, because I downloaded it from this like government website. I made the video. I found the clip of her interviewing, being interviewed by Jay Leno and her talking about it. I was just like, what the hell is this? I found it. And I look, I'm the original. Editor. I did it first. That was my first episode of my podcast telling y'all who did it first. And it was me. And then somebody cropped the video and it put it on somewhere else and it went viral. I'm telling you what I know. And what I know is what I said. The Clark sisters. So the Clark sisters of course, another album I love that came out last year, but I still listen to it monthly, weekly. Incredible. They put out the, um, well, somebody, I, it's been out for a while, but it's been, it had been like private on their website or something like that. Uh, the documentary um, of them making that album. And it's a beautiful piece of work. And you get to see what's, you don't get necessarily to see like the writing process, but it's more of like the recording process. They work with like Dark Child and Rodney Jerkins, I mean, Dark Child, I think, Rodney Jerkins, Snoop, um, Jermaine, Dupree. It's such a, I don't think that's what the point was. It has the classic um, Clark Sisters feel, but these modern twist to it and it's so beautiful and it's so interesting how some of like on um power the song power it has like these 80s sort of like beats to it but these 80s beats kind of sound very modern what they're doing now so it's kind of ooh, ah, ooh, ah, sounds so good but one thing i took away was how much work the Clark sisters put into their vocals. Yes, it's only like, yes, it's three of them, sometimes four of them. This is four of them, sometimes three of them. But they put so much work into it. And, you know, sometimes, you know, one will go off on like a vocal moment. And then it's like, no, let's stick around. Let's stick to this. Or, And most of what we see in the documentary is bass line of i'm not even gonna say demo it's like above demo it's like baseline of what the record is gonna sound like because at the end of the day the record has like they'll put like a bass we like i'm just saying what we heard was like a baseline 
bass vocal uh, or idea in a way, but I'm not going to say demo because I feel like they used a lot of their vocals <clears throat> that weren't necessarily demo-ish. It didn't come off as demo. It just come like, this is the bass line. And then at the final listen on the record, there's so much more to it. There's so much vocally more that we didn't see them record. I'm like, this is interesting. And I wonder if they like went back after like had like a second recording process on some of these songs or most of the songs, or did we just not see them record, you know, some good moments, but overall it was a great documentary, quote unquote documentary, basically making of the album. Cause it wasn't a whole bunch of like talking. It was just them in the studio, them talking in the studio with each other. Um, reactions to songs great it was a great moment to see and you see the clark sisters harmony and you see you know karen clark killing it during the killing it jackie having her moment on power which is such a beautiful dynamic build-up of a song like when they showed power i love that they showed it the way they did because it was like the build-up of power we kind of saw it musically building up of power because it is like three different songs the beginning of the acapella and then jackie and then we have the mary j blige moment and then we have the church moment and then we have the dorinda church moment right it's such a build-up and a beautiful song and it's like it all fits together it sounds so great it doesn't sound like three five different songs it just it feels right it feels so good um a shout out to that. Shout out to that. So the last thing I want to talk about before I tell you what the song of the week is, not before I tell you what the song of the week is, which is Christmas Jam. Go ahead and celebrate. Play your Christmas music. Get into it. I have been meaning to get to, like, it's been in my spirit to go listen to um, Christmas Jam or, like, her album. No, no, no. I've been meaning to listen to Christmas Jam because I do love that song. It's a great Christmas song by Patti LaBelle. Uh, which is the song of the week. Uh, it's called Christmas Jam. Go listen to it. It's produced by Jimmy Jam, Terry Lewis. Um, I forgot that they had produced that album. And uh, Big Right. I think this was, yeah, this is her second Christmas album. Her second solo Christmas album. I believe um, Patti LaBelle and the Bluebells, they did, uh, they did a Christmas album <laughs> back in like the 60s. Um, but yeah, I forgot Jimmy Jam and Terry did that. It's such a great, like, modern Christmas album. I guess we'll talk about the album. We'll talk about her Christmas mu- music in the coming weeks as my lisp <laughs> comes through. <laughs> so, Patty has this, like, cook off show. I said this last week. This is the 56th episode, by the way, of the Dare Show podcast. Patty, Patty had this um, cook-off episode or cook-off show or something that I guess we'll see in the coming weeks, maybe. Like I said, I don't know if it's on YouTube, if it's going to be an actual show. Um, but also, Patty has this like thing on Walmart, which I was informed of, that is called Patty. I think it's called Turn It Up. And she has, like, it's a really great concept and really great ideas. It's a lot of ideas. So... She's on Walmart and she's talking to you in her black wig. Also, Patty is doing, um, she's busy this week, right? Wait, let me tell you, right? Um, speaking of her, her black wig, I was having a conversation and I don't, it's like that short black bob wig. It's her get to work girl wig and I don't like it. It's not my favorite, but she wears it. She wore it at one of her, she switched it to it, um, at her, um, Tennessee show this week. This past week. Um, What was I saying? Wait, okay, so Patty is performing at Divas Simply Singing, I think it's called. The charity for AIDS that is put on every year by... And she sang it at so many years. I think she sang it at last year also. Um, She sang it... uh, It's put on by Shirley Ralph, the actress and singer. And then she'll be on Sunday doing this Christmas special. Or this Christmas thing on like... ABC or somewhere, some network television. So check out, keep an eye out for that. I'm going to check it out. We'll talk about it. We'll talk about it. Because she met with um, 
um, Chris Stapleton, who wrote Tennessee Whiskey, who she loves. She loves that song. I'll talk that about that in a second. But the diva is simply singing. I, it said it was going to be live on like Facebook um, at like seven. So I'm definitely going to hopefully check that out and see Patty sing. I think Jennifer Hudson, um, Patty, some other people. So that sounds really good. Um, so she's in her wig for this turn up recipe. So the recipe basically it's her giving out recipes and then she'll remix the recipe and you can go it different ways. Like there was a, the small, um, she was like, okay, we, we have my sweet potato pie, which I got, I've been eating off of. I got my sweet potato pie. She's like, we can go off of this. You can go do it a s'more and have the little, like little cutout of the little Sweeney mini sweet potato pie, which sounded really good. And then, or you can go cl- a classic way. I didn't, it's, there it was too much back and forth. I was just like, uh, let me just go one. Because literally, it should give you, like, different ideas. Also, there is, there was one, like, the chicken and biscuit recipe she had. So she was like, you can do a buffalo chicken and biscuit bite dipper. Or you could do, like, I forgot what the other was. But it was just, like, her main recipe. You could remix it, do it like an appetizer, do a dessert, do different things. Very interesting. It's called Turn It Up. I believe, and it's on the uh, Walmart website. I was shocked. Very shocked. I guess this is where she's been. I'm like, girl, where you been? Okay, this is where she's been. Um, Let's talk, okay, this is the last time I want to talk about her live show. This is such a great live show, I have to say. I watched the full thing on YouTube. I'm noticing uh you know, people put clips on YouTube. She had, like, a really big show with Anthony Lee Hamilton and George Wallace, the comedian, this past week. And I think she was overwhelmed in a good way. She was, like, she was so grateful to be there. She came out and sang, I believe, at the end. Um, her vocals were really delicious. Really great. Um... And I think because it was like an arena and it was like full and it was like people and they were chanting her name. They were really up for it. Like some videos you can't really hear, but like there's some uh, video, there's a video footage and they're in like the, the up seats up, 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 up in the seats and you can hear them chanting and screaming. They just sound like they had a really great time. I love the medleys. I love the beginning medley of something special, which is incredible. And I love the little jacket. She has a little jacket. She has like a three piece on, <laughs> which is so funny because that period of time it was like 2008 to like 2000, like 13, 14, right before she went on dancing with the stars. She was in like this, like simple black, thing thingamabob i don't know what that was it wasn't like the dynamic patty i think we were used to seeing but that she brought that back after the dancing with the stars and even now the like glamour and the little like shiny outfit i told you guys remind me of like the spider outfit she used to wear she wore like the winter to winter new era um she had, like, this coat of the shiny outfit. It looked, she looked gorgeous in it, but she only, like, wore it for, like, a second, and she put it, took it off. I was like, no, you need to wear that a little bit more. Get your money's worth out of it. That's something special, and then she goes into feels like another one, medley, and then she goes into be herself. I absolutely adore it. I wish it was a little bit longer. I love it, though. It's so good. Like I said, the hair, he cares into when you've been blessed. Genius, genius little gospel moment. I wish she's saying he cares a little bit longer. And then the, at the end of the show, she does um, Lady Gaga. What does that say? Alone. I don't know what I wrote here. The Lady, I mean, Lady Marmalade, <laughs> not Lady Gaga. The Lady of Marmalade into Bad Girls. I lo- like I said, I love that moment. It's like a tying of two stories of the same story in a way of these women having to work hard for the money, right? Um, It's so cute. 
and I love it. I love it. And I just love like Lady Marmalade being the last song and her them being creative with this. She goes and does a little quick change. She comes out and does a little Lady Marmalade and everybody's popping. It's a it's a great creative moment of what she had of something new. This like the pandemic makes us all think of what can we do new. How can we remix our lives? Blah, 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 blah. But, like, in terms of, like, the show, I feel like this show, they had to, like, do something new. The Somebody Loves You moment. And then um, Asia, she's been doing this, like, her little solo. So great. And, like I said, she did, um, I believe, she also did Tennessee Whiskey because she was in Tennessee, which is... um, Written by Chris Stapleton, where she, I think they're, they might be doing something, or they're just doing the same Christmas show this year. Uh, they took a picture. He looked, <laughs> he looked unbothered. She looked happy, but he looked unbothered. <laughs> but honestly, that that Ohio show was really good. Also, she did an Ohio show. I think these are the last, her last shows of the year. I think the next show she'll have is in, like, March. Um, but thinking of Tennessee Whiskey and this show being, forcing them to be creative, she doesn't, I've realized, I remember she doesn't do, um, what's the song on? If You Don't Know Me By Now. She doesn't do that song. Well, she's done it for, like, the last, since, like, 2012-ish. 2013 14 she's been doing it so that's like seven years almost i was surprised i was like realizing because i came across a video and then she she isn't doing a cover which normally she does but i'm not complaining i i love this revamped of the show the costumes that spider the first costume silver thing is not my favorite but the and she has to wear the yellow but she's wearing the black and white flowy um dress Love it. Wig looks great. And then the little costume for her, change for Lady Marmalade. Amazing. Shout out to Patty. Shout out to Patty. Shout out to Patty LaBelle. Thank you so much for listening to the Dare Show podcast. Thank you so much for listening to me talk about Patty. <laughs> if you're still listening. Um, on that note, I'm going to end it next week. Hopefully, I'll have some like stuff to talk about in terms of... Um, I'm going to try to listen to the... Grammy nominated songs. Tell you which ones I like, which ones I don't. I'll go category by category. And we're in December. Thank you so much for still listening. Uh, I have 49, 48 episodes from music reviews to just talking about stuff. I now have two. um, (laughs) One doesn't work, but two taste testing videos. I have a little collaboration with my friend um, James on there, on here. You can scroll back a little bit to listen to that. Scroll back a little bit, listen to like some, you know, Kelly album reviews, Carrie Underwood, Josh Stone, tons of Patti LaBelle album reviews. Thank you for listening and cheers until we end out this year. <laughs> and I have this fierce single that Sammy McKinney and these little guys put together, baby. I got it. Single that'll make you jump up and dance, and if you can't dance to that, you got a hole in your soul, okay? Mm. <laughs>